far of I'm a Washington lawyer, and you may be wondering why I'm introducing two wonderful dancers. It's an interesting story, but uh, my story isn't what I'm uh, here to do. But I will tell you that when I first came to Miami about 20 years ago, fell in love with Jennifer Rodenberg because I'm a ballet fan, and she's a gorgeous dancer. Uh, years later, I became her literary agent when she wrote her first books, which she'll talk about later. Uh, and in those intervening years, we've become friends and almost family. Uh, same with Carlos, who I first observed as a dancer, and he's uh, now become a, a warm and close friend to our family. So I'm going to introduce them today and let them talk about their careers and their new dance company. Well, I think the first thing that people will be interested in is how you became a professional dancer, and I know that your story is very different from Carlos's, so tell us a little bit about it, and, and you know, how did you get from the beginnings to where you are now as extraordinarily well-known international dancers? Well, I was in love with ballet for, as I remember, it, I just knew from the time I was very young that I wanted to be a ballerina, and there was no other option. It was what I was going to do, no matter what. Um, and I started taking lessons, and, and I studied in a very small school in Queens, New York, um, until I was 16 years old. And then I went on to the School of American Ballet in Manhattan, which is the school for the New York City Ballet. And while I was there, Edward Villela came up to New York. He was the director of Miami City Ballet at the time. And I took the audition on a whim, sort of to hold the hand of a good friend of mine. Um, I did not think anything was going to come of it. And believe it or not, as luck would have it, I was offered an apprenticeship. So the following year, I came down to Miami. And um, I, 23 years later, I'm still here. So you, you danced 23 years at the Miami Ballet. I Starting did. when was that? I started with um, the 1994-1995 season and I stayed on with the company. I became a principal dancer in 2001, and I just left the company uh, last season, 2016. Carlos, your story could not be more different. The contrast is remarkable. Tell the story about how you became a dancer and where and, and how it all evolved. Well, I am from Kamauai, Cuba, and I started dancing when I was 10 years old. And my family tried to put me in music, and I didn't have the right quality for music. So they tried then, after ballet, tried to put me in ballet, which my father was not very happy about it. <laughs> Since he was a sailor, so he didn't really... Not macho enough, huh? Right. So, um, then also the ballet, the art schools in Cuba, they have a very good education. You, you have combined both uh, the art and uh, academics in the same school. So, I started ballet. I didn't like it um, at first. I thought it was a little bit too boring, you know, too much discipline. Ten years old, being in a bar there, and people telling you not to move, and it was slow exercise. I just wanted to play baseball or play <laughs> soccer, you know, not being there at the bar with tights. But, you know, as I was looking around and getting bored around, around at the bar, I see a lot of girls. So, you know, my interest of ballet started after that. <laughs> because I thought it was very... Um, it was great for me to be in between all these girls. So that's how I started. And after, after four years, three, four years, I became, you know, take How old How old were you when it became a serious practice on your part? I think uh, I, at 13, 14 years old, I became more serious about it, and knowing that that's what I really wanted to do. So it's my passion. You know, I live for it. So Cuba has a lot of great dancers, uh, so you really were following a tradition uh, in that country, but how did you get from there to the United States? Well, it's funny because I, I pass all, I finish all my school, all the years of the school in Cuba, then I dance as a professional ballet dancer. Well, how, does that, how does that transition happen? That transition happens, you need to pass eight years in the school first, and then you have a new you know, you graduated and then you passed to the professional ballet company. And that's what happened to me. How old were you then and, and, and what was your I company? was, when I graduated, I was 17 years old. And I finished a little bit, 17 turning 18 almost. And then I danced for two years almost in the ballet on my way. 
Then I went to Paraguay, Asuncion, Paraguay, to represent Cuba in International Ballet Gala. And then in Paraguay, being there, the director from the Ballet of Santiago de Chile, which at that time was Ivan Nagy. At this point, you're now out of school and you're a professional dancer. Professional, yes, after two years. And then I went to represent Cuba to this gala. So this director saw me dancing and he offered me a contract to go to Chile and dance for them, join the company for you know, for a, con a contract for a year. So I went back to Cuba and I told about that to my family and they were, everybody was very happy. Except my director, she didn't want to leave me, mm -hmm. to let me go. And then I, you know, we started um, talking and you know, negotiating the contract. So at the end she let me go. Uh, she allowed me to go to Chile for a month. And then I ended up staying a year. I never came back again. At that point, it was clear to you that you were going to be a dancer for, for the oh, rest yes, of Oh, yes, yes, yes. I've been mean, dancing. You're not going to be an insurance salesman. No, 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 no. You, a ballet you, dancer, so. And then I get to Chile, and then I was there living in Chile for almost three years when I had the opportunity to come to the United States, especially Miami, for a Latin, very famous Latin TV show called Saval Gigante with Don Francisco to give a surprise to my grandmother who was going to be part of the show. And that's how I landed in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> and, how, and you didn't get into the Miami City Ballet in the traditional route that Jennifer did. That's an interesting story. Yes, I, after the show, after the, the TV show, my family, uh, my aunt told me, I'm going to take you tomorrow morning to the Miami City Ballet and we'll get asked for an audition. And at that time, it was Edward Villera, the director. So I was like, oh my God, okay. I said, I haven't taken class for a week. Just, it doesn't matter. And you didn't speak a word of English? I, I didn't, know. And that's generally not how dancers get hired into a ballet company. You just don't show up on the doorstep with, with, and with say, my, let me in for an audition. I like to meet my aunt. She's yeah. my agent. Or <laughs> she, well, she was the one saying, like, already, we went to the studio, and there is a big windows outside where you can see the dancers. And so she was trying to get Edward Villela's attention. So she was outside the window. No, I did this. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, behave, please. And she's like, I know what I'm doing. Relax. I'm like, I'm like, oh, I, I actually remember that day very you well. See, see I was that? in class at the time and Edward was teaching. And I remember him, he kept looking over at the window and finally said, do I know this lady? <laughs> he went over and he kind of gestured to her and said, well, come on in. And I think he himself thought he might know her because she was waving with such vigor. <laughs> and that's just, yeah, that's exactly what happened. He so, came, he so came to the it... door and he was like, may I know you? <laughs> and she was like, no, but he represents you the best dancer in the world. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so then um, he invited us, was in the middle class, and he invited us inside and sit in front of the room and finish you know, watching class as he was teaching, and then after that, we just went to his office and we started talking. So he gave me an audition for the next day. And wow. the next morning, I was there. And were, were you there when he auditioned? I was, I was in the class when he took class. Yes, yeah. class. And what did you think about his dancing then? I thought he was fantastic. I thought he was fantastic, he was great. He was young and handsome, and uh, <laughs> so this, this world-famous director of a ballet, himself a great star in America for many years, he just takes you into his office, likes your dancing, and says, hey, kid. Well, after class, what happened was after class, and the following day after the class, uh, he took me there and he was like, well, um, I like your dancing. You have a lot of potential, but uh, we have a position now because some of our boys are injured, so I uh, need somebody to fill this position. I have a contract uh, offer for you as a soloist. I thought it was great, because I know there will be a lot of work to do, because here we are training a different um, style. style, Balanchine style, and coming from classical, classical style. So I said, okay, we'll see. I wanted to go back to Chile and we closed for four days. I didn't bring anything. I didn't have the intention to stay. Only to audition and just spend time with my family, my grandma. So uh, I stay. I decided to stay for one week. And I decided for another week and another week. And it had become already now 17 years. I'm still here. <laughs>
Now, how did you decide what you would dance in the audition? Did he say, I want you to do this, or did he say, show me, show me your stuff? No, the audition, uh, normally the audition, uh, what happened is like, it's just a class, a regular class. Ballet class. On a daily basis, a regular ballet class. With the whole company. So, he will look, he will look at you. He evaluates. He evaluates you, and pass by you, and like, see, you know. So, <clears throat> one, one, three-day visit to your grandmother ends up with you being a citizen now. And tell us how you uh, and Jennifer ended up together. Well, when I first came, I was sitting in front of the class. I saw this beautiful lady with these gorgeous eyes, right, dancing in front of me. And I thought she was flirting with me. No, <laughs> because she's looking at the me, so she's looking past me. So I'm like, trying to, you know, make a connection, but I couldn't. But at this point, you didn't speak English, right? So yeah. how, how did you come I need to work with my sign language. <laughs> no. What happened was, like, after I was hired, uh, El Bilela put us dancing together. He has just promoted her as a principal. I was just recently promoted and, and just really breaking into the principal roles, and he was brand new, and we were both young, fresh blood. Um, and I think aesthetically, he just thought that we looked but right he came from such a different uh, dancing background with different that was techniques. Also was part that of awkward, it, or how did that work? Did it work smoothly? It obviously? actually worked out really well, but I think that was partially Edward's intention, was to pair him with somebody who was well-versed in the Balanchine style, um, as opposed to putting him with someone who was also trying to, to acquire the style. Remember the first dance that you danced together? It was, it was the Nutcracker. It was the Nutcracker, but that we were yeah. about to perform. The company was on tour, was going to be on tour performing in Broward, Broward Center. But they had some show combined with the school. And then it was in Ocean Reef, Ocean Reef. Ocean Reef. So she was off that day. And then he offered me to, if I wanted to dance there, so he didn't have to use the other dancers from the company, mm -hmm. since there were already a lot of injuries. And so yeah, we went, we rehearsed for like over a month, mm -hmm. month and a half. The no cracker palette. Was it hard for you to switch from the more traditional classical dancing that you were raised in into the Balanchine? How how easy was that it was transition? Not easy. It was not easy at all. It was very hard for me, especially trying to get the steps. The dynamic of the steps are different. Everything is more, it's much faster than what I was sharper. used to, sharper and faster, quicker. So and who was so, your teacher? Was it the well, law? Edward in classes, he was always on top of me, you know, helping me and the rehearsal, we catching the rehearsal, like, I'm going to move you there, you know. So um, they helped me a lot, they helped me a lot, I'm very grateful for that. And he helped me also dancing with her, and then I'll crack it, picking up the style a little quicker, Things, you know. Well, when you're dancing together with a partner, you're forced to accommodate yourself to your partner's timing. So I, I did the timing and, and the accents that I knew were right. I just had to follow her. Yeah. <laughs> I just You've had to been bear, following just her work. ever since. <laughs> right. <laughs> that became a, a routine. You know? <laughs> so so tell, tell the, the listeners, uh, what's a typical day of a professional ballet dancer? Give us a typical day on a Tuesday when you're rehearsing and, and then a Friday when you're performing. What, what's life like during a day like that? Well, we generally start around 10 in the morning with a, a company class, which is a warm-up, um, for about an hour and a half. And if it's a typical rehearsal day, we'll rehearse anywhere between three to six hours. Um, we usually have an hour break for lunch in between. If it's a performance day, we still start with the same class, warm up. Sometimes you'll have a technical rehearsal or a dress rehearsal on stage, a dinner break, and then you go straight into the performance. It's a long so it's day. It's a very long day. It can be up to a 12 hour day. Yeah. Very exhausting day. When you finish it, when you get out of the theater, you just want to go to bed. I mean, you destroy it. And, you know, thinking, knowing that the next day you have to go. And do the same thing all over again. Now, do you, as professional dancers, do you have any say about what it is you're doing, or are you told, Jennifer, today you're going to do this, and Carlos, you're going to do that? As or do you ever you go know, and say, I want to do Romeo and Juliet together? 
You, I mean, you can make the request, but generally it's it's up to the director and the artistic staff to make those kinds of decisions. And as a dancer, you are told what role you're playing, what ballet you're dancing, when you're dancing it, and you just follow direction. But now that we're directing our own company, we get to choose what the other dancers do. <laughs> well, that leads it's to a the, big challenge. Yeah, well, that leads to the next obvious question, which is tell us about your new group now that you both left the Miami Ballet, and how, how is life different being the manager? You still perform. We do. But, um, but tell how life has changed and, and, and what it is you're bringing to Miami and your new group, Dimensions. Our new company is, is called Dimensions Dance Theater of Miami. And um, the of Miami part was very important to us because we really wanted to establish a company that was very representative of the cultural diversity here in Miami, but still true to ballet. Um, so programming is, is a challenge because we're trying to stick within the ballet parameters, but still go outside of the box enough to incorporate um, cultural aspects to it. Like we had a band playing traditional Cuban music um, during our first performance. Um, so so it's, it's really a lot of research, um, a lot of creativity to go out there and try and incorporate these different things. Um, and also our, our dancers. Our dancers are all local dancers. We don't, or we haven't yet, start, started hiring from the outside because there are so many talented dancers right here in our backyard that are in need of work. Um, so we're providing that, that platform for them. And how do you decide who does what? What's your role? What's your role? In well, we, we're we, a team. We, yeah, we're really a team. We just decide. Um, we know our dancers, so we're trying to create balance that are accommodated to them. You know that we think that with some work, they're going to make it look great. And we're so trying to also work. bring styles that are challenging and new for them, so that they broaden their own horizons. Um, the biggest challenge is that because we don't have so much funding yet, we don't have the luxury of endless rehearsal weeks. We're sometimes throwing uh, performances together in two weeks or three weeks of rehearsal. And when the style is very different for the dancers, to do that in such a short amount of time requires a lot of work um, and a lot of dedication mm -hmm. on the dancers. Which is great. They're very willing to learn a different, They're fantastic. Um, a different style. So, they they they're happy to be doing what they what they, what they study for you know because a lot of them we got them some of them was working one guy was for example working in construction there was another guy that was working in a supermarket lifting boxes because they came from Cuba and they were not able to find jobs anywhere here in Miami or the United States we were able to get them out of that and you know giving them the opportunity. opportunity to dance and do what they love. Well, while you're Miami-based, you also have brought in people from other uh, parts of the country and from other countries, and you are yourselves performing um, in, in many places in the United States and internationally. How, did, how does that work? Well, the nice thing about our group is that we're still small enough to be very mobile. Um, so it's very easy for us to pick up and go on tour someplace, and because what we dance is very culturally representative of Miami. Um, I think that's that's a plus for presenters who, who want something that really represents the city that they're bringing it in from. We perform with the company and we perform outside of the right. company as well. So we perform more outside of the company now. We have a lot of guesting with our agent. And with the company, we just always try to do a little something because it's not just about us, it's about our dancers, so we give them all the possibility of, you know, for them to perform, which is always do something little in our performances. But also because it's hard um, being in rehearsal and rehearsing yourself by rehearsing other people too, it becomes very, very difficult in terms of uh, scheduling. But do you miss dancing full time or do you get enough of it in the course of what you're doing? We really get enough of it in the course of what we're we, doing and you know we both danced we for danced many years and we were so fortunate to have had such a wealth of amazing ballets that we did. We danced in the best of theaters. Um, so we, we feel 
happy and accomplished and fulfilled. Well, how can people who watch this program and are intrigued by your new company help you get started? And what, what, what do you want them to know? Well, they can visit our website, www.dimensionsdancemia.com, and all of the information to support us is on our website. Um, we do have a GoFundMe account set up, and we also take uh, tax-deductible donations like any arts organizations. Um, major gifts, we've gotten some grants from the cultural affairs, so little by little, we are acquiring the support that we need, but we always need more help. The arts are always in need of more. Well, as if you don't have enough to do, I, uh, it's interesting you've also found time to write a few books and you have a third on the way. Say, say a little bit about your two books. Well, my first book um, is called So You Want to Be a Ballet Dancer. And that was really written as um, part memoir and part guide for young aspiring dancers um, to sort of have an idea of what to expect if they were to become professionals. The second book is geared to a bit older audience, um, and we collaborated on that book together. It's about partnering work and the artistry of partnering work within the ballet. I think the interesting part is that it's not just a textbook where we explain the mechanics, but we really go into detail about the interpersonal side of it and um, the relationship side of it, um, the challenges and the beauties and all of that. So we're excited to talk about that this afternoon. Does it also give you a little bit, also it tells you in the book about um, strengthening, you know, your muscles and being careful how to work so you don't get injured. Which has happened, I talk about a lot of that there because it happened to me, I have a few injuries in my dance career, so. You people are great athletes, I, I, the image of dancers being aesthetes is really not accurate because um, you are in tremendous physical condition and you have the same kinds of problems that professional athletes Absolutely. have in terms of injuries and whatnot. Well, as the leader of your fan club, I'm so happy you're coming to Key Biscayne, and I hope people will tune into your company, and I wish you great success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.